So, um, the evolution of human consciousness throughout time, installation. What a thing. What a goddamn <laughs> fiasco. Um, it took two and a half years to complete. Uh, it was started in the depths of kind of the combination of loneliness and idealism. <laughs> uh, I had just left uh, Zendik Farm, right? Which was the only person I knew in the world was Cheezer at that time. Well, and certainly I dropped off the face of the earth for like five and a half years uh, and had lived in this social experiment, artistic community that like kind of got me thinking about life in a different way. And then I came back and lived with his ass. And I was working full time as a professional artist, 3D video games, uh, sign maker, art director for an event planning company. And so I was on the whole art tip. I was doing professional art. I was producing, 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 and but kind of yeah. had no idea. And, like, I, and I had been making art for equally as long as it had never made a goddamn dime. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, was really trying to get my belief systems articulated through the artistic process and had been reading and researching just how the hell can human beings live in a world that makes sense and dedicate their genius toward creative expansion for all of culture and I knew that art always led culture and so I wanted to do art but I didn't want to do anything where I'd have to compromise my integrity or just do it for the dollar if it was going to have to shut me up. And you and I had been in contact the whole time yeah. while I was in school, yeah. while I was working and so I knew I could follow what you were saying because I had been to Zendik, I had and and it was more just like a, a catalyst to get us brainstorm. I mean, we had worked together since we were ten years old, drawing from Bart Simpson to comic books to high school whatever crap to me dropping out of film school and you uh, getting your animation shit, and then me just uh, trying to uh, live at the farm and and live based off of my idealism, and then it became. Uh, I, I I was all of a sudden came back to the, my hometown. I he was the only person I had really stayed in contact with, and so I just started painting, just painting to like try to get these ideals out. And uh, it was ended up being number four, the um, the Crucible. And uh, when I was almost done, I'm a neurotic, so I like uh, paint every single little detail. And I had uh, uh, grass and these dollars and these things that if I knew if I <laughs> If I tried to do them, it would extend another like four yeah, weeks yeah. on the project because every single blade of grass would have to be absolutely perfect. So I said, "Cheese, get your professional artist ass in here and like bang this stuff out in like a day." Yeah. So he came and he did that, and I was like, "How relieving!" I was like, "Awesome." A, I forgot how awesome it was to work with you. B, you understand these concepts. Let's start to work together and yeah. form a partnership. And so. As it went along, I, I would I'd find, I I was talking to him and brainstorming with you naturally anyway, so it was like natural for you to just start to jump in, and add your aesthetic elements, and I would articulate the uh, or, or or map out the um, composition and design and stuff, and then he would come in with just a, a professional like banging out attitude and you know not and suffer my neurosis and uh, my ramblings and give me feedback and new ideas that I hadn't thought of and make it look cool. Yeah, definitely. I liked, <laughs> I liked the, I always read a lot of comic books. I liked the big monster, superhero. Special effects kind of stuff. Guy and special add, add effects. Add the pizzazz. Add the, well, and just the stuff that puts it over the top, like the finishing touches yeah. and stuff like that. And that I would have gotten so insane about it being real that it would kind of be static and boring. And you, you, you break me up and I solidify you. In yeah. Way, so. And that's the thing about uh, trying to work and create geniuses. You have to shed the ego, and he can do things that I can't do, and I can do things that he can do on the canvas. So we just had to form that partnership. It's like and a blend of like fine artist with commercial artist. Right. And we have always said that I'm a decent painter that somebody might want to hire, and he's a decent painter that somebody would hire. But the two of us together are this third thing that you definitely yeah. want to get with. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we're doing all this stuff, and then uh, we talked to Will about doing the soundtracks because we realized that visually the compositions were strong and that we were getting the ideas across, but there's these ethereal, more esoteric, subtle vibrations that I wanted people to pick up on. And then 
I needed past elements, and then I knew I needed the future. And the future, the, the left side of the, the arc of our paintings is what scared the crap out of me, because, you know, I can do research, I can read some books and study and figure out what had happened, I, what is going to happen. Yeah. You know, I just felt like I was going to end up corny and painting these few, the future things, like 1950s movies about the year yeah. 2000, and everybody's rocket cars, and <laughs> my yeah, exactly. suits. Yeah. And of course we did end up bedazzling everything and using mylar, but <laughs> not in the way that we might have thought. Um, but so then we got Will, and uh, when I met Will, I just immediately recognized him as a kindred spirit, that if anybody could handle the vision of what the future of music might sound like, I was like, yeah, it's this, it's, it's this mind can, can fully conceive of this vision and enhance it in a way that I could never even dream of. And it's still like magic to me, it's still like, okay, uh, I don't understand how in the world you did that, but awesome. Like, had, had the roots of it before I even had to ask him about certain paintings. Like, he'd be like, oh, well, what about this? And play something, I'd be like, well, yeah, yeah, actually, that is the song, wow, I hadn't even asked you or explained the concept, and you already just had it in your bag of tricks. You asshole, how do you do that? Um, uh, and then uh, down the line, we ran into this guy, John what? here. John, nice. and John ten months ago, I guess. Yeah, what? Colin met you at wing night, I guess. Was yeah, the Andrea initial. introduced us. Yeah, we we're hanging out, and you, she's just talking about art, and you're like, "What? You sculpt?" Yeah. Well, well because for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were um, Chisa and I were uh, like number seven, the final room, the transcendence of consciousness into multi-dimensional space, where you you know, experience time, both forward and backward, and are become uber consciousness. Okay, that should be real easy to paint. Like, even my dad, whenever we were halfway through the series, and I was kind of just, like, walking him through the concepts, and we got to that one, and he, he looked at all the paintings, and he read all the little things about the paintings we were about to do, and then he came up to me, and he goes, Boy, can I ask you a question? I was like, sure. And he goes, how the heck are you gonna paint that last one? <laughs> I was like, I have no idea, honestly, and it scares the crap out of me. But then we thought, okay, I was like, well, it's it's beyond this dimension. I was like, and I was looking at the paintings one day, I was like, oh man, this is a two-dimensional world. Everybody in here is two-dimensional. I was like, beyond that dimension is three dimensions. I was like, oh, the, those guys in two dimensions cannot imagine a three-dimensional reality. We here in three dimensions can't imagine a fourth dimensional or multi-dimensional or whatever reality is beyond this. Oh, okay, so then we'll do a three-dimensional thing and <laughs> Cheese and I went out to Michaels and Joanne's Michaels and, and assembled Seymour. foam and plaster casting and we made this dragon that's actually kind of cool. It's not oh, bad. Right, right. It's I not liked bad. the dragon head. I liked it. It's yeah. not that bad. But it was little and just kind of like, our dragon was like, <laughs> in a way that like we wanted it to be like, Argh. and so when I talked to him, you were like, oh, I do professional foam sculpture. I'm like, you do what? Foam sculpting. I know. Yeah. And uh, what have you been working on? Lately, or no, <laughs> just the the well, train well, thing. I've, oh yeah, I've been work for uh, Antietam Studios, and we're building uh, sets for museums. And right now, we're working on the Roads and Rails Museum, which hopefully will be opening here in Frederick in the near future. It's going to be just giant. How big is it? How big is it going to be? Right now, the core of it is like thirty feet square. What's it going to be though? It's going to be about four times that. 120 by 120? Yeah, it's it's going to be massive. Wow. That and uh, restoring classic cars. Yeah. So whenever That's I, fun. then I, because that, that was the thing, I was like the professional foam sculptor. Oh, and you're cool? Awesome. Yeah. All right. 